Today, the people of Israel are faced with a supreme emergency. In eight years of great achievement, they have taken in nearly 800,000 refugees from lands of danger and despair, built more than 400 new settlements, reclaimed a neglected land, made it yield again, built industry and commerce, built schools and freedom. But all this has been accomplished in the face of unremitting Arab hostility. Seven Arab states, numbering 40 million, have tried to crush 1,500,000 Jews by economic blockade. Iraq cut the oil pipeline to Haifa, shown here. Egypt closed the Suez to Israel shipping by economic boycott. All of Israel's land borders have been closed off from normal trade and commerce. By guerrilla warfare, in five years, 884 Israelis have been killed and wounded by Arab marauders and Arab action. In Tel Aviv and Haifa, people tried to forget that they were only 14 miles from the Jordan border. In Jerusalem, they couldn't forget. Jerusalem is on the border. So, in the settlements, they learned to protect themselves. That's the way it was until October 1955, when communist arms flowing into Egypt changed Israel's position overnight. Overnight, Cairo moved to but five minutes away from Tel Aviv by Soviet MiG bomber. Overnight, Egypt gained the power to back up loud words and threats with communist submarines and heavy tanks. Overnight, Israel's very ability to survive, not just to defend her borders, stood challenged. But in the face of this supreme crisis, Israel still continued to receive thousands of new immigrants monthly. Why? Here's a good reason. This is a Mela, a Jewish ghetto in North Africa. Not much future here, even when times are quiet. They're not quiet now. Day by day, Morocco and Tunisia become more Arab. Jews have suffered violence and economic discrimination. Now, they fear possible future entrapment. 80,000 Jews in Morocco, 20,000 in Tunisia, are registered all ready to go to Israel. More are waiting for the chance to register. This is a big step on the road to Israel and the future. It's an immigrant staging camp outside Marseille. The camp, Grand Arenas, holds 5,000 Jews from North Africa at a time. As places are ready for them in Israel, the immigrants are called forward. Your help, through the United Jewish Appeal, makes possible their food, care, and resettlement. Israel hopes to take in 45,000 this year, depending on what you do. The prospective settlers learn about Israel, engage in useful work. The great day comes. A ship is ready to take two or three hundred to Haifa. And now, en route to Israel. The Sabbath is observed at sea. Three generations at worship. En route, Jewish agency officials help each family decide where to settle. First look at Israel and a new life. Once, newcomers went to immigrant hut towns like this, the Mabarat. 60,000 still live in these shanty villages. The Jewish agency hopes to move 12,000 this year, if there are funds. Children growing up here suffered most. But today's newcomers go directly from ship to new settlement. This is Lachish, a great area being developed southwest of Jerusalem. In the ancient past, this was the land of the Philistines, where David fought Goliath. Its future? To grow cotton and cattle. Since May 55, nearly 20 settlements for 5,000 have been established in Lachish, along with roads, schools, water, electricity, and work. 
This makes the Lachish development possible. It is the Yarkon Negev pipeline, finished in the summer of 1955, to bring water from the north to dry Lachish. You helped to build it. This also makes Lachish possible. It's a Nahal settlement, an Army Agricultural Corps settlement. Three Nahal settlements stand between Lachish and the Jordan border. The Sabra youngsters here are picked because they can both farm and fight. The settlers learn to defend themselves. They have to. When night comes near the border, you put down your anti-grenade shutters. A marauder might toss one in your window. You go on building and raising your children, even though it may mean teaching them to use bomb shelters. Above all, you don't run away. Here, you have a chance to live and work in freedom. Israel needs the immigrants. They need Israel. Immigrants build the land. Each new settlement helps build the country. More important, Israel is made up of immigrants or the children of immigrants. Yesterday's settlers mean to keep the doors open for those who want to come today. But in 1956, while the people of Israel meet their emergency, we must meet the North African immigration emergency. Plus the normal UJA supported programs of the United Israel Appeal, Joint Distribution Committee, New York Association for New Americans. Through your support of the 1956 United Jewish Appeal for 105 million $283,000. Plus your additional support for the UJA Special Fund for $25 million plus.